This is the first section of chapter one from the further statistics book um, out on discrete random variables. And first section here is the expected value of a discrete random variable. Now you can sort of think of this chapter to do with dice. So imagine you've got like a, um, a dice and you've got particular numbers that can come upon the dice. So let's say um, I have, I'm going to write down these values of X are going to be the numbers that come upon the dice. So let's say we've got the numbers 0, 5, uh, 7, 10 and 11 on a dice. And in this bottom row here, what we're going to put down is the probability of each one of those values coming up. Now, if it's a fair dice, let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. They'd all be um, one fifth. Assuming it's not fair, we can have different values. But what we'll know is, is that all these values will add up to one. So I think I've got that adds up to 0 0.6. Uh, 0.8 okay that should be one yeah so that all adds up to to one so the top row here this is going to be like all the outcomes imagine they're like the numbers on the dice and the bottom row here this is a notation used to say well, what's the probability of getting each one of these these values above and what we might want to do is to work out what we call the expected um, value and the expected value you can think of like the mean expected value okay it's basically it's the mean so if i've got this dice with these numbers on it and these probabilities what's the mean value that's going to come up now that mean mean value may not even be a number that's on the dice all i need to do is to multiply each probability by its outcome. So if I start with the first um, column, I've got an outcome of zero and the probability of that is 0 0.1. And I've got an outcome of five and that probability is 0 0.3. I've got an outcome of seven and that's got a probability of 0 0.2. I've got an outcome of 10. Whoops, that's got a, a, a probability of 0 0.2. And then an outcome of 11 and a probability of also 0.2. And basically, if I work all of that out, I'll get what's called the expected value or the mean. So we can use this value uh, or symbol for the mean, or we can use this E of X, basically means the expected value of X. And that's what we're going to be uh, working out in this first section. Now it says discrete random variable. So this is where um, each outcome is normally like a whole number yeah so you can't have an outcome that's in between those it's not continuous these are discrete outcomes like you get discrete outcomes when you roll a dice right a fair six-sided dice is rolled the number on the uppermost face is modeled by the random variable x part a write down the probability distribution. So that's when you put the uh, outcomes and the probabilities in a table. So the outcomes, a normal fair sided uh, fair dice is gonna have the outcomes one to six. And each probability is going to be one over six. So there we go, that's all we need to do. Part B, it says use the probability distribution of X to calculate E of X. Now it says use the probability distribution. It doesn't say calculate it. And now how do we do that? Well, we can use symmetry. So I could uh, do it the manual way, which would be one times of six plus two times of six and so on. Yeah, we could do it that way, uh, but we can use symmetry. Now what that means is that, first of all, is the table symmetrical? Well, if I look at the probabilities, yes, they're, they're all the same, so there is a symmetry about them. 
and actually the spacing of all of these is symmetrical as well yeah they're all spaced one apart so i'm going to find the mean in the very center so if i was to count in from the ends the very center by symmetry would be right here between three and four 3.5 so i could say that the mean value is 3.5 by symmetry if I did the calculation, I get the same answer. Now, here's, I'm going to do like another example over here so you can see how we can use this symmetry. So let's say, for example, the outcomes were 7, um, 10, 11, and 14. And the probabilities were uh, 0.1 there and 0.4 here okay now this looks different from the um, previous one but it is still symmetrical look at the probabilities they're symmetrical and these values are symmetrical because you've got a jump of three there a jump of three there and then you got one in the middle there so by symmetry here e of x for this one would be 10.5 yeah so it doesn't the probabilities all not, don't need to be the same but there needs to be a symmetry in those values now in the examples i did the mean happened to fall between two numbers it could be that the the mean actually falls on a number it all depends on how many uh columns you've got if you've got an um even number of columns it's going to fall between numbers if you've got an odd number of columns it's going to actually fall on a number but this is how we can use symmetry to find e of x and when you do this question if you find it by symmetry write down that it's that by symmetry now on both of these uh, questions on part b here you could work this out this way check that you get the same answer work this out and check that you still get that same answer there The random variable x has a probability distribution as shown in a table so that's given there given that the mean e of x is free write down two equations evolve involving um, p and q or well, the first equation involving p and q it's going to be that the sum of this bottom row the sum of all the probabilities is one okay so i'll just write down that so the sum of the px's is going to be one so that means that one equation is going to be p plus q uh, plus 0.1 let's write this down and we'll simplify plus 0.1 0.3 plus 0.2 equals one um, so p plus q so if we take away uh, this which is 0.6 from both sides we'll end up with p plus q equals 0.4 so there's one the other equation we're going to get is how we work out the mean which would be the sum of x times by the probability of x which is e of x we're told that equals three so let's do the working for that and we'll do that here so um naught Point 0.1 or 1 times do it that way around 1 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times p plus 0 0.3 3 times 0 0.3 we'll tie this all up in a moment plus 4 times q plus 5 times 0 0.2 my bracket in one place equals three so we can tidy this up so uh, 0 0.1 plus that's 0 0.9 so that makes one five times 0 0.2 is also uh, one so let's write this down 0 0.1 0 0.9 uh, one one 
Okay, let's put all the numbers to one side. So we'll be taking away two from both sides. So that will leave us with one here. And then we're just left with 2p plus 4q equals one. So there's our second equation. Okay, find the values of p and q. So this is just solving simultaneously now. So I've got at p plus q equals 0.4. 2p plus 4q equals 1. So let's times the top equation by 2. There are other ways of doing this. So that gives me 2p plus 2q equals 0.8. 2p plus 4q equals 1. Let's subtract. So I'll have negative 2q equals negative 0.2. So Q is going to equal uh, 0 0.2 um, divided by 2, so that's 0.1. Okay, and then uh, let's substitute in so we can work out what uh, Q is. So I'm going to substitute this into the very first equation. So I'm going to substitute into that one there. So that's going to be P plus 0.1 equals 0.4 so that means that p equals 0.3 so let's just check that these are right because these sort of all add up to one so 0.1 that would be 0.3 so that gives 0.4 plus that 0.7 0.81 so our check shows that actually those values work so I'll just highlight that there that's part b and part A, here's our two equations. Uh, there are other ways of, of writing these equations. A discrete random variable X has the following probability uh, distribution. Okay, write down the probability distribution for X squared. So in other words, what we're going to do is um, change these values of X to X squared. So imagine you've got a dice and what we do is we take all the numbers of, on the dice and we square them. Yeah, so this is our, our imaginary dice here. We're going to square the numbers on the dice so we get 1, 4, 9, 16. Now the probabilities don't change because all we've done is square the numbers on the dice. Okay. So there we go, there's part A done, there's our probability distribution. So yeah, these values here are the uh, numbers squared. And in part B, we want to find the mean of X squared. So basically we're gonna find the mean of that table above. So that's going to be one times 12 over 25 plus 4 times 6 over 25 plus 9 times 4 over 25 plus 16 times 3 over 25. So that's going to be 12 over 25 plus um, 24 over 25 plus uh, 36 over 25 plus, don't I keep writing equals 4, plus uh, 48 over 25. So let me add all of those numerators together. 12, 24, 36, 48 gives me 120 over 25 now there's no reason we can't leave it like that um, it's exact um, we can simplify it to 25 24 over 5 which is 4.8 so any one of those is useful now you may be wondering why have we worked out the mean of x squared this is going to be useful later when we work out of the variance of a um, discrete random variable or probability distribution. Let's assign like that. So there's part B, 
part A is basically the the whole of that table. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 1A on pages 4 to 5 of the textbook.